Recently, I built a PC using the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G and thought this would be a great opportunity to test some emulation. So before we get started, here are the specs. This time around, I wanted to start with the fourth generation using the BSNES emulator. When I originally tested the 3200G, it had a tough time with all the enhancements on the OpenGL API. With the 5600G, there were no problems in this regard. Upscaling the resolution to 4K, using mode 7 upscaling, turning on run ahead for lowering input delay, and overclocking the emulated CPU did not tank performance in the slightest. For the fifth generation, I just focused on the console this time around, starting with PlayStation using the DuckStation emulator. Just like before, upscaling to 4K was possible, and using two of the corrective texturing options did not seem to affect performance in games I tested. I did do some more overclocking of the emulated CPU and found that I did have to lower the resolution to 1440p in one of the games as the higher resolution did affect performance. Next, I tried the RetroArch Yabashen Shiro Core for Saturn emulation. Upscaling to 4K was possible and it didn't seem to hinder performance. I do however want to just mention an issue that I had with Burning Rangers where I could not continue after dying, so just keep this in mind. Lastly, for fifth generation, I tried a few Nintendo 64 games using the Moopin 64 Plus Next Core. Upscaling to the highest available resolution, which if I'm correct is 1920p, did not seem to affect performance, though when introducing other enhancements like MSAA, I found I did have to keep it between two to four to ensure performance stayed solid. Let's move to the sixth generation where I started my test on the PCSX2 PlayStation 2 emulator. There has been a great deal of development since my last test with the 3200G, with Vulkan API now being available, so I was definitely curious to see what kind of performance I would get. Like with the 3200G, 1080p seems to be where most titles are going to sit in terms of upscaling along with 16 times anisotropic filtering and FXAA just like before. With that being said, overclocking was possible, allowing me to double the frame rate in a few games that originally were capped at 30 frames per second. From there, I tried XEMU, the original Xbox emulator, and things are looking pretty good with 1080p once again, being the recommended resolution for upscaling. I did have trouble loading one game that worked with my other PC, but this may be an issue with the current version. Next were GameCube games using the Dolphin emulator, and like before, 1080p is the recommended resolution. 16 times anisotropic filtering was fine with FXAA, and depending on the game, 2-4 to four times MSAA is once again recommended. Wii titles for the most part seem to be the same for settings as well, but bear in mind shader cache may initially affect your performance. Obviously the main event is the 7th generation and I wasted no time with testing the CPU hungry RPCS3 PlayStation 3 emulator. It is apparent that the additional cores and threads of the 5600G is what was needed to really have a good experience on this emulator, and you can even upscale the resolution to at least 1080p in certain games. I did also try using FSR at the 1080p upscaling resolution, and could see no difference in terms of performance. I also revisited CMU, and like before, things are good. I did try enhancing titles this time, upscaling to 1080p, and included 16x anisotropic filtering, and things seem to be running fine. Like with the 3200G, it is possible to increase the original frame rate of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and if you have a 120Hz display, 40 frames per second seems like a viable option with the 5600G. I did try testing this out for confirmation, but found an issue where the display kept changing back to 60Hz after going into full screen. Finally, I tried out Xenia Canary, and like the other emulators, it has been a pretty good experience. I did run into an issue with running Red Dead Redemption, which I believe may have something to do with the current version I was using. So that is my experience with the 5600G. If you're looking for resolutions higher than 1080p for the 6th generation games and up, then a better GPU is definitely going to be necessary. It is obvious the CPU is ultimately why the 5600G has amazing performance, especially within the 7th generation emulation, and if you're purely looking to build a budget emulation PC specifically, then 5600G is a good choice. With that being said, it has been confirmed AMD will be releasing a new generation of integrated APUs, which is coming in January. So you might want to hold off and see what the new chip has in store before going with the current offering. This latest look at the 5600G has inspired me to do a comparison video with the 3200G, 5600G, and the RTX 2060 with i9-900K. So be on the lookout for that in the hopeful near future. For now, this is the core of your entertainment techie, signing out.